Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here, and today I am joined by beloved actress Candace Cameron Bure, who is joining forces with the Salvation Army once again to help rescue Christmas for millions of Americans in need this holiday season. Thank you so much, Candace, for taking some time to chat with us. You're so welcome. This is amazing. Um, you know, and I, I know that you work closely with the Salvation Army, and, and I just think what they do overall is unmatched, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and it's, it's just so awesome for Americans in particular. Talk a little bit about, we'll get into kind of what the initiative is that you guys are doing, but I want to ask you, why is Christmas such an important season for you personally? Oh, well, <laughs> Christmas is my favorite time of year for so many reasons, but um, you know, the biggest reason is that we celebrate Jesus Christ. Um, but you know, it can be a hard season for so many people. And that's why the work that I help do with the Salvation Army is so important because there's so many people in need and, and especially with the holidays when it's a time of giving and should be a time of cheer. It can be very, very heartbreaking, especially for people that are struggling, whether that's financial, whether it's just circumstances that they're in, homelessness, needing food, uh, just needing help and daycare. And now with the pandemic, of course, that need has gone up. The Salvation Army is expecting to serve 155% more people this year because of the effects of COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's so important for those that are able to give, no matter what amount that is, it's so important that we do because it's through our donations that help the Salvation Army serve over 23 million Americans every single year. Yeah, so what are some of the things that um, the donations will go to? Is it strictly just needs or, or will there be gifts as well? Or how does that work? They, the Salvation Army does everything and they help people long after disaster strikes, long after the holiday season ends, they are always there. So they help with shelter, uh, providing homes to meals and job training. They give people the tools they need to overcome addiction and then help them get back into training for jobs and help them get jobs. They provide daycare for people that need help with their children so that they can have jobs. I mean, it's endless, the work that they do. You kind of touched on this, but the organization expects to see a 50% decrease in donations and who knows if mm. it's more than that. Um, you know, and, and I, it's, it breaks my heart. I mean, every holiday that we're approaching, um, I don't even celebrate Halloween. And I felt sad that there were no kids like coming to my right. door, you know? Um, and so just to think that, you know, people will be afraid to walk over to the kettles or to give, and I don't even know if the Salvation yeah. Army will have those because of COVID. Just, can you talk about just um, the, this new normal that we as a people have to navigate through and then on top of that how much harder it is for people in need. Sure well you for so many years you all see the red kettles when you go to the mall or to the grocery store on the street they're out and about someone ringing that bell with the red kettle and it's so familiar to us but there aren't gonna be as many opportunities for those red kettles this year just because of the time that we're in with COVID. And a lot of retail stores aren't open and there are safety um, you know, protocols to go through. So they are expecting a decrease in the amount of donations, but we're so hoping that doesn't happen. So if you know that, hey, when you would go by the grocery store and drop a couple of dollars in the bucket, we're asking, please, still do that or please go to rescuechristmas.org and that goes directly to the red kettle campaign rescuechristmas.org because we want we want, so like christmas isn't canceled you know we still yeah. want to be there to help so we're asking you to help us rescue christmas to serve those in need and you can set up a recurring donation as well but it's so important that we 
even if it's a couple dollars that we still continue to do that. It just might be in a different way than we're used to uh, in the past. Yeah. You know, I know uh, you are the queen of Christmas movies and I love, <laughs> I love, I, I love that I can always expect something new for you um, during the Christmas holidays. What, what does that mean for us? Well, my new Christmas movie is called If I Only Had Christmas. I, I absolutely have loved making this Christmas movie. And I have to say that I've, out of the nine Hallmark Christmas movies I've made, this one is my favorite, <laughs> which I've never said before. I've never yeah. picked a favorite one. But I love it so much because it's, it's an homage to my all-time favorite movie, The Wizard of Oz. So it was just so fun to, to help develop this script and create it. My, uh, my producer, Jim Head, came up with this idea knowing how much I love The Wizard of Oz. And so from development until the final picture, we collaborated on everything and have such wonderful actors in this movie. Warren Christie plays my leading man, Glenn Goodman, and they're kind of a twist to his character, but there's three other characters in there that might remind you as from re remind you of some of the characters from the wizard of oz like jackie crow who's a little bit of a scatterbrain and bridget tinsley and she can be a little cold-hearted at times and riley lyons who needs a little bit of courage so you can see some of the themes of the movie but ultimately the the biggest theme of of the movie is there's no place like home. Mm. I love that you're uh, that, that you're providing some of your inspirations to give us content. Mm -hmm. I love that. I hope you continue. To yeah. That. <laughs> um, Thank so you. This is a hard season. I mean, it's a hard day today. <laughs> like I'm just like. Mm -hmm. I just want to know so I can accept whatever happens. Um, but here we yeah. are. You know. Yeah. Um, what are you kind of hoping happens this Christmas season? <laughs> if there could be something that you're just like, this is my hope and wish for this Christmas season of 2020, what would it be? Honestly, um, my honest wish is for, for people to know Jesus Christ. It always is. I know it's a, it's, that's, it's my, it's my goal in life. It's my mission in life. I love people and I want to share with them the best news I've ever known in my entire life. And that's the good news of Jesus Christ. And so there's no better time. There's never a bad time, but there's no easier time to share the good news with people than at Christmas time, because it's the whole reason we celebrate. And what would that change if people did receive the hope of Christmas, Jesus. Wow. Well, I know how many lives would be changed. I, I know how many people would have hope and, and wouldn't be as anxious and worry as much, although it's, we're all human and we all do, but there's so much comfort in Jesus and his word. And you don't have to worry about every single thing that may or may not happen because we already know the end to the story. We know that Jesus wins. We know that God wins. And that for me gives me hope when I'm going through the hardest struggles of my life. I know that there's an eternal perspective and I have hope in my eternity and not just the time I'm here on earth which is like gonna go like in, in the blink of an eye it's gonna be so fast compared to my eternal life which is forever and I want to put my hope and trust in my vision in eternity Beautiful. last thing before I let you go um, I know a tradition that you've been in keeping with is partnering and helping others. Um, what's, uh, what are some of the traditions that you share during this Christmas time? I'd love to hear from the Christmas queen. <laughs> <laughs> we have some fun ones, although some of them we can't do this year, which oh. is so unfortunate, but I, I've, I've shared, you know, for, for 
the last 10 years, Christmas morning, my family and I serve at a homeless shelter. That's a very small one. We bring all the food along with our family and friends and we cook the meal for the people that are staying there and sit down and eat and with them and bring gifts and just talk and share stories and encourage them. And this year, we're not going to be able to do that because of the pandemic, but we're still going to find a way to be a blessing to those people. Um, and then, you know, I like to have not every year, but kind of every other year, I like to have an ornament exchange party with my friends. I did the last two years with my Fuller House cast and it, we had so much fun and just, you know, it's a small group, but having a little party at home and, and, um, and then everyone does like, it's the Christmas ornament exchange and you get to <laughs> steal it up to twice. And so it's always a really fun night. And I, I felt like, hmm, maybe, maybe I could still do that this year with a very small group, like 10 people, you know, that could still be yeah. safe. Cause I feel like that would bring uh, at least our little group, <laughs> just, just some joy. Cause I miss, I miss my friends. We all do, you know, we're not spending as much time together, but ultimately I love our Christmas Eve, which is with my children and my husband and my mom and dad. And we always have a wonderful Christmas Eve dinner. And my husband makes beef Wellington mm -hmm. and it's so delicious. And then uh, we usually all go to my brother's house for Christmas day. And again, we have a big family, so I don't even know if that's going to happen. <laughs> we, oh. we just have to see, but yeah. you know, I always look at the silver lining and I always take the most positive things. And I know that ultimately having my parents and my my husband and my three children at home is like the best gift and best Christmas mm -hmm. that we could have. And so I'm, I'm praying for everyone. Please know I'm praying for you because I know not everyone has that. And um, so I just, I don't know. Yeah. Well, my thank you for out to everyone. Thank you for sharing those intimate moments. I love that. I know you have a book um, that's coming out. Is it after Christmas? The, the your new children's book? Yes, Candace's Playful Puppy. It comes out January 26th, I believe, but it's on, it's available for pre-order right okay. now, which I so hope that people pre-order it because that helps us sell the book and yeah. it allows like the buyers to know that they should stock it. So those pre-orders are always so important for an mm -hmm. author. And um, well, it's a good the it's a good time. It's a good time to to get pre ordered gifts for children. <laughs> Just say, I, know. I got you a gift. It, I'm here till January. <laughs> uh, right, I know, I know. But it's it's so I love writing these children's books, and it's the third in the series. And Candace gets a puppy, and she's going to learn all about faithfulness in this mm -hmm. one because she has to be faithful to keep up with all the dog training, which can be difficult and exhausting <laughs> so she has a big lesson to learn in this book yes I hear you I'm a mom of two puppies two doggies they're not puppies but they're little yeah. not like yours you got a big baby <laughs> I know he's huge <laughs> I love him he's so awesome well thank you so much for taking some time to share with us um can you share again how we can get involved with the Salvation Army and what should people be looking to do yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for this interview. I always appreciate you and so very much. And um, please go to rescuechristmas.org. That is the Salvation Army's website that goes directly to the Red Kettle campaign, um, because you might not see as many red kettles around this year when you're out and about, uh, because we're not out and about that much anymore. So please keep up those donations. We really rely, Salvation Army relies on all of our support to help families in need. Thank you so much, Candace. You're so welcome. And to your Christmas film as well. 